Good morning, mathematicians. It is Tuesday of week 31, and we're starting with some dividing by powers of 10. In this case, we're actually dividing by 100. So when I start with this number, 3,200, I know that I have 3,000 and I have 200, right? Now, if I divide by 100, I'm not taking it to its nearest neighbor place value. I'm actually going two place values over. So my hundred are gonna move two place values over and they're gonna become one. And my thousand are gonna go two place values over and they are going to the 10. And in this way, I see that my answer will be 32, right? It's like those moving cars. All right, so let's go to our next one. I love A and B because this is a reminder that when we subtract fractions, we can borrow and regroup just like we've done in decimal and whole numbers. So if I have nine holes and I'm gonna lose not an entire hole, but just two ninths of a hole, I wouldn't have um, I wouldn't have nine minus one, which is eight. I'm gonna have nine minus the small amount. So my answer would be eight and whatever with two ninths becomes another fraction of one because that's going to account for the other whole number, right? So if I have two ninths, I know that seven ninths makes a whole. So two ninths plus seven ninths is one whole, and this other eight gets me to nine, all right? Let's use the same idea for B. If I have six minus two, that would be four. But really, I'm going to put a three here, and I'm going to think about the fraction of one that I have with five sevenths. If I have five over seven, I know that two over seven is going to be that other fraction of one. Five sevenths plus two sevenths is a whole. That whole plus three, that's going to get me to my six, which was my starting point. Okay? Now, with C, this is a good reminder that when we add or subtract our fractions, we want to have a common denominator, right? So really here, before I can go forward with solving, what I have to do is think about this 1 8. 1 8 is going to equal what? As an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 16. Well, to go from 8 to 16, I multiply by 2. See, 8 times 2 gave me 16. So I'm going to do the same thing for the top. I'm going to multiply it by 2. 1 times 2 is 2. And well, look, now I can write that equivalent fraction. It's not 1 8, it's 2 16. They have the same value, but now I have two denominators that are the same. So now, boys and girls, we are ready to apply the operation of addition. I have 3 plus 7 gives me 10 for my whole numbers. Now I have 16 in this denominator, 16 in this denominator. So yes, my answer's denominator is 16. And let's apply the operation to the numerator. 2 plus 7 is 9. That is my answer for C, right? I'm going to circle that because I sure have a lot of work here and I want to remember that really that's the answer that we're looking for with C. When you come down to the next questions, we will get another opportunity to think about adding fractions. Just like we saw in this question, how we have to have those equivalent fractions in order to have our common denominators, we're going to do the same thing here. When I look at this denominator of 6 and this denominator of 3, I realize I want my common denominator to be 6. So I'm going to ask myself, what is 2 thirds in an equivalent form that has a denominator of 6? Whatever I do to the denominator, I'm going to do the same thing to the numerator. 3 times 2 is 6. 2 times 2 is 4. So my new fraction is 4 6. Now, boys and girls, we have denominators that are the same, and we can go forward with adding. 5 plus 6 is 11. Now my denominator is going to be 6, and I have 5 plus 4 is 9. Now notice, in this question, I have a mixed number, but I have a whole number part and an improper fraction part. So instead of saying this is my final answer, let's think about 9 6. How many times can 6 go into 9? One time. And what is left over? 
three is left over and my denominator stays the same. So look here, we have one and three six. And now I'm gonna add my 11 that was in the beginning to begin with. And my final answer for this one is actually going to be 12 and three six. I could say 12 and a half. I could certainly reduce that and that would be just fine. But the reason that this worked is because this nine six really equals one and three six. And I'm gonna add the 11 that I originally put up here. That's where we get that answer that we just plugged in, okay? I'm gonna draw a little line because we sure did a lot of work for that question. And let's do the same thing down here below. I have denominator of four and denominator of 12. So that tells me this three fourths, we are gonna create an equivalent fraction for with a denominator of 12. So I ask myself, what do I multiply four by to get to 12? Well, four times three gives me 12. Three times three gives me nine. So now let's put our two and nine twelfths. Notice my equivalent fraction there, plus four and five twelfths right? Okay, two plus four is six. My whole number is six. Nine plus five is 14, and my denominator stays the same. Now, once again, just like on I, we have an improper fraction here. So I'm going to ask myself, really with this 14 over 12, what does that equal as a mixed number? Well, 12 can go into 14 one time with two left over, and our denominator is 12. I'm gonna combine that with the six holes that I already had in the front. And now I see that my answer is seven and two twelfths. I'm gonna circle that because that's my final answer, seven and two twelfths. If you wanted to turn that into seven and one six, that is perfectly fine as well. Both of those have the same value, but yes, one twelfth would be the most reduced form that you could make. Oh, boys and girls, there's a lot of fractions in this Tuesday. We're going to take a quick break from fractions here when we think about this very interesting can. This says a can of Dr. Pepperoni has zero and six tenths liters of cola and pizza sauce mixed. Three fourths of the mixture is cola. How many liters of pizza sauce are in the container? Put your answer in both a fraction and a decimal. Now, my mind tends to think of these things like tape diagrams. This entire part is our six tenths, and that's how many liters the entire can is. Now, this much of it, oh, of course, my pen is not going to work very well for me, but that's okay. Let's take a look here. This entire section there, because it said three-fourths is cola. This part is going to be the pizza sauce. What a very interesting drink. So if I think about these six tenths as 60 hundredths, I know that if I take 60 and divide it into four, I'm really gonna have 15 hundredths here, 15 hundredths here, 15 hundredths here, and 15 hundredths here. Because if I add 15 plus 15 plus 15 plus 15, I get to 60, 60 hundredths. That helps me see that right here is the pizza sauce, right? And we have been asked to report this in two ways. So let's report it first as a decimal. We have 15 hundredths and that is liters, right? But remember that 15 is in the hundredths place. So we can also report it as 15 hundredths like that. And again, that report is given in liters. What a very interesting can of Dr. Pepperoni. Okay, one last question. And again, it's fractions, lots of fractions today. Solve the following and simplify the fractions if possible. Okay, notice I just rewrote it here. What we do when we have a problem like this and we notice that we don't have common denominators, we zero in on the denominators. I have 10 and two. Which of those are we going to go with as our common denominator? We're gonna go with 10. So my first job is to find out what is one half in an equivalent form with a denominator of 10. Well, that's going to be 5 tenths because 2 times 5 equals 10, 1 times 5 equals 5. So notice, boys and girls, that's your first step. Now that I have common denominators, I'm going to go forward with actually subtracting. 
And remember, this one is subtraction. So now, let's subtract our whole numbers first. 6 minus 4, excuse me, 6 minus 2 is 4. And now, let's think about that proper fraction. We have 10 in the denominator position, so we're going to stick with 10. Now, we have 7 minus 5 is 2. So my answer is 4 and 2 tenths. Now, it does tell us to simplify if possible. So, of course, my whole number will be unchanged. But if you notice that your numerator and denominator are both even numbers, you know you can at least divide out the 2. Well, 2 divided by 2 is 1. 10 divided by 2 is 5. And I have my answer here, boys and girls, of 4 and 1 fifth. That is our final answer for today. Boy, we've done a lot of fraction work. Um, but we'll see you tomorrow, especially for some work with coordinate planes.